Now it's to you and, and, and your little show. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, what I've brought is, um, I, I, you know, I, I there was a uh, request for, you know, a one and Which I didn't have. I didn't, I, I, sorry. <laughs> I, 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 I wanted to hear about all David's one because they take my breath away every single time. Um, the one I had access to is from episode four of season seven of Game of Thrones. Um, the scene isn't what you'd call a one because the scene is what at the time was the biggest battle scene they'd done. Obviously, there are hundreds of cuts in it. Um, and um, uh, just a little background on the show. If, if, if you watch the show, um, usually episode nine of the ten was, the, was usually the showstopper episode, the one where they really pulled out the stops and, and went crazy. And I had done two episode nines previously, my first being in, in season three, I did the Red Wedding episode, which um, went over, they, they were pretty happy with how that turned out. <laughs> Amazing. Um, and then in season five, I did um, the, the, the two last episodes, and w one of them being in the, um, in the, in the bullring we used, where you see Danny fly on the dragon for the very first time, again with hundreds of extras. Um, this, I, and, I, and I also, in, in season four, I did uh, 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 an episode four and five with Michelle McLaren, and they were very solid episodes, but they weren't spectacular by any means. They, but, you know, I'm, I'm very proud of those, too. So along came, um, you know, I got a call to come and do season seven, episode four and five, and I thought, well, you know, that's okay, good. Those will be the easy ones, no pressure, because there's so much pressure on those, on those, on those really huge ones. Um, and then we were handed the scripts, and the way the show worked was usually you were you were sent all ten scripts around May, um, and then in June they'd fly us over to scout locations, and it would be a real whirlwind tour. Usually they'd try and jam it in in about a week, and we 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 visit. I, I didn't have to go to Belfast that year because I, I'd been there enough that I, I knew all the Northern Ireland locations and sets really well. But uh, we did go to Spain and check it out, and we went to the pre-chosen battlefield location, which was a national park just outside a small town called Catheres. Um, and I shot, this is in June, uh, we weren't gonna be shooting until mid-December, so I shot just oodles of, of uh, frame grabs of sun path and so on and so forth and everything you could possibly get so that we could start chewing on it. Um, and um, it was like my, my my plan for an easy season seven, six months away from home, uh, was shot when we got this script, um, which the marching orders were basically, we did Battle of Bastards last year, and that was like, uh, uh, knocked everybody out. Well, this year we're gonna do a bigger one. And so, you, you know, you kind of take a deep sigh and you <laughs> a deep breath and um, just, just get ready for a, you know, a, a lot of work, because it's a lot of cuts. So next what happens is we land over, we land in Belfast in July, usually um, the uh, director, the AD and I, um, and at that point we were all still, they were making 10 episodes and the way it worked was there would be five teams of a director, a DP and an AD and you'd each do two episodes. So was, you know, you're each, you're, and, and we're all there at the same time, which was kind of great because it was a rare opportunity for all of us um, there was the DP room, and at least initially, there'd be five DPs on, all together in the room, all scratching our heads, trying to figure out how we were going to solve our problems. And there was a lot of, there was a lot of, um, you know, like wondering how the hell we were going to manage to pull this off. And and but there was a lot of give and take, and 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 it was really productive, and it was it was a really nice way to get into the show. Um, so you'd start. We we immediately started this sequence um, um, first breaking it down into beats. It was pages and pages and pages of beats, and then shots from the beats, and then from there we'd move on to the storyboards because the visual effects department needed, their, their, in spite of what you might think, their budget was stretch, always stretched absolutely to the limit. So for budgeting these kind of things, um, a great deal of care went into the storyboarding and the planning to try and avoid having to do visual effects shots and anything that we could possibly figure out how to do efficiently, practically, um, we would do that. And then to save that VizFX money for more important things like building photo real dragons, and it's pretty expensive. Um, so 
So we storyboarded the scene, and we wanted to uh, at least have, I mean, keep it as, as subjective as we could, very much in our key characters' um, worlds and points of view. And at one point, in the, in the, in, as the battle has, has started, Jamie tells his man, Braun, that he's got to basically do a suicide charge from one end of the battlefield to the other, right through the thick of the battle. They're, uh, they're kind of in a safe spot where, where uh, we find them. And um, to, to get to this thing, that the character Kyburn, who was um, kind of the, the Red Keep's cue of James Bond fame, who had, had built this gigantic crossbow specifically made for shooting down dragons. Um, and he, he's positive he's not going to make it. I mean, he, and, and it was very well played. But in the, in the, in the thick of that, that charge, what we called the bronze charge, we wanted to, to eliminate as many cuts as we could, partly because each setup takes longer than sometimes if, if you have a well-planned oneer, it's a lot quicker than a lot of cuts and a lot of beats. Um, and the, and, and the, the episode had a lot of cuts and a lot of beats anyway. Um, so we devised this one shot, which um, um, I can roll through the storyboards for you. But before I do that, just going into it, my biggest concern, and if anybody thinks shooting a, 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 a really involved battle scene is, is fun or exciting, um, I can, I can, I can, I, f I feel otherwise. Um, you know, for, for me, the most exciting thing about this sequence, the most I was ever on the edge of my seat, no matter even when we had 50 guys on horses. Um, and just to give you an idea of the size of the scale, for the first two weeks of the, sh of the 16 days we shot that um, sequence, we occupied 600 hotel rooms in the, in the area, and that didn't include all the local labor that we hired. And you know we had we had an entire we had to build entire stables on the other side of the hill to house 50 horses and all the people to look after the horses and the stuntmen to go on the horses and the people to make sure the stuntmen were safe and so on and so forth. So it was it was a pretty big undertaking. Um, and and but my biggest my biggest concern was how am I going to keep a sequence that that is going to photographically take 15 minutes to watch, um, but 16 days to shoot, all looking the same in December in Spain when we didn't have light until 8.30 in the morning and it was gone by 4.30 in the afternoon. Um, probably all the, but you know, all the indications were that it would be sunny most of the time, but there were inevitably going to be cloudy moments. And if you're doing crowd replication as we were, we had, you know, 200 dressed soldiers, but you'd have to lock the camera off and pray that you didn't get a cloud or the weather didn't change by the time you move those 200 guys down the field 10 times. To, to make it look like you had an endless army. Um, my ace in the hole was that pretty soon in the sequence, the dragon comes over and burns everything up. So now you've got an excuse for smoke. And I had done this before. Um, and um, one thing they have over there that I've never been able to get here in the US are what they call bezlers, which are gigantic industrial strengths. I think they're actually US Navy surplus foggers, and they put them on the back of pickup trucks. And months ahead, we, we, we knew we were going to need them, so they built a, a road that ran around the ring, the perimeter of the, of the uh, battlefield, the, the set, so that they could race around to whichever direction the wind was coming from so that I could, I could blot the sun out with the smoke, which you would expect to see because everything's on fire anyway. Um, and, you know, occasionally in this little even short sequence here, the sun poked through. You can't always, you can't always win. Um, we can, if we, if, if, if we want to scroll through this, um, it kind of walks through the sequence a bit. And we stuck pretty close to it, although editorially they took a little, a little cutaway of Jamie's sword fight and put it at the beginning so that we stayed strictly with, with Braun on his charge. And um, when we got to the sequence, um, the, the part where the shot starts, it's after he's been unhorsed and has to run for it right through the middle of all this battle. And um, if you watch carefully, I don't know, I, don't know, I, I think it's hard to spot, but there, there are two stitches in the shot that we, we had to break it up into, into three pieces. Um, uh, for safety's sake, because we had people on fire and getting the, there, there were real safety concerns about, about the timing of it and having the, being, being able to get the, the fire extinguishers in to put the guys out. Um, 
Uh, anyway, we can we can run the sequence and and. Uh, I used no filters on this at all uh, because the, the showrunners had a very strict no flare, no, no, they, well, I can talk about it after, but. Um. Shot starts here. Just, just backing up a bit, some of the some of the visual rules for the show um, were that um, the, the the showrunners hated anything that uh, that they you know artsy fartsy quote unquote um, camera flares, um, unmade, unmotivated camera movement um, until until the Battle of the Bastards when they went ahead and broke the rules um, on that episode and closed the shutter down. No close shutter for action scenes. I mean, the, it, uh, it was it was like that. That's all there was to it. Um, so to that end, on a sequence like this, we and, 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 and this whole sequence, and it wasn't the first time that I I had no time. You, li literally, we were we were scrambling all day long, every day for for 16 days of shooting this, and, and most days on that show, quite honestly, because the shooting days were fairly short. Um, Frequently, I would just pull all the filters out other than NDs as needed because we literally, the directors, none of us felt like we had time to just to even take 30 seconds to fiddle around with the filter to try and angle it or something if you got if you had a kick in it because they really, really didn't like that stuff. And um, um, it, it um, yeah, anyway, the, the other, other times when I was dealing with, you know, Trying to pretty up the ladies and stuff if they you know if if, if it was needed I, I did use light glimmer glass and occasionally Hollywood black magics on the show but any of the action sequences outside those were all shot clean um, both in this and and in season five and the others uh, action sequences I did now as he's running along here the first stitch was was the swish pan off the horse back uh, banging into the uh, Burning Man. And obviously, this was all. There were no fake horse, no fake uh, horse riding here. It was all real actors on real horses um, being tracked. We had a tracking, an all-terrain tracking vehicle with a uh, with a Scorpio head on it. Um, and originally, this shot had been planned to do. We'd planned to use the Maxima uh, because we'd had really. Here comes the. Here comes the first stitch right here on that swish back to Braun. And the second one is as we tilt up to the dragon going overhead. Um, I would say 80% of the fire you see is, is practical. Uh, what we did was they, they went in months ahead and plumbed the entire battlefield with propane lines underground <laughs> and then built the, uh, um, had, had, 
steel wagons built for after, the, after they've all been lit aflame and they were all plumbed with pilot lights so that when we were ready to go, they literally they'd turn a switch and everything, they'd turn the fire on and turn it off and everything stayed the same and consistent. Um, it was really great. Some of, the, some of those little bits of fire on the ground and stuff are, are added in later, but for the most part, a lot of that flame is, is real. Occasionally you'll see, you know, like a little bit of sun or a bit of highlight or something coming through there, which seemed like it was natural because the smoke wouldn't be that consistent. But we did have some cloudy days and the smoke then excused that, that bump in, in what the weather looked like. Uh, but I was just going to mention, you know, um, David's using the, uh, the Ronin. We had incredibly good luck with the, with the Maxima, which was quite new at that point. And um, we originally thought we were, we, we'd use the shot with two guys running with it and, uh, and, and uh, you know, an operator on the other end uh, because we'd used it. We used it one time it got us out of a pickle uh, on a long walk and talk on, on a beach on the Bay of Biscay. Um, but the wind was coming in at like 35 knots and the steady cam was impossible to keep straight. Um, the Maxima really saved our butts on that one and, and in quite a few other instances. And so we're all really sold on it. But in terms of the energy and stuff, at the end, at the end of the day, we put a mini LF, um, uh, actually a mini, not an LF, uh, with, a, with a Cook S4, which were our was our standard equipment on that series on uh, operator Chris Plevin's shoulder, and he killed it. Um, now, we did rehearse this a few times, but we got it more or less in one take, um, and because everybody was so concerned about the fact that every time you're, you're you, you don't want to be lighting guys on fire, and, and three days before that, we'd lit 20 on fire at the same time and, and set a new Guinness Book of Records for doing that. And we, we, we were, <laughs> We didn't want to push our luck, um, and we didn't want anybody getting hurt, and, and uh, luckily nobody did in the, in the uh, 16 days of shooting on that sequence. This was this represented, I think, about three hours out of that schedule. So handheld with a Cook S4? Do you remember what yeah, focal length? Stripped like? down. Um, I want to use the 27 a lot, I know. I used, I mean, you know, and, and I, you know, my favorites on that series are, are like the 27 and the 40, but um, I assume that's what it was, I'm guessing. Thank you for the question. It's really hard for me to resist the lens questions. <laughs> <laughs>